Thanks so much for joining this episode of The Blade Boys. We've had a fantastic... Oh, I'm Ted Flett, and this is... Smith Das. <laughs> <laughs> We've had an exciting weekend uh, of Neville Horn Trophy, as many of you have, uh, watching the debut of many programs and competitors this season. Uh, I had the fortune of uh, being there in Oberstdorf, Germany, uh, for the days of practices and competition at the event. Uh, Myth was uh, was back at the ranch, making sure yeah. that. <laughs> if, if, girl, if I wasn't if I wasn't so brown, I would be turning green with NB. Because like that is how mad I am that you got to go see the comebacks of so many amazing skaters um, and so many amazing like performances for the beginning of the season which we're going to be talking about but yeah like yeah. you had a good time you were you were busy right like you got to it talk was, to a couple was, skaters i tell you it was a lot of work you know juggling you know capturing video you know images of what i could in terms of practice and warm-ups which are uh, bits and pieces that often fans aren't able to see uh because you know in the world of television you only see sort of a couple seconds before the skaters announced, you see their program, you see them, you know, cut into the kiss and cry. And so it was nice to be able to, you know, bring people some of those, uh, some of those images uh, that you don't normally see. And which is also, frankly, when some of the drama and, and the excitement unfolds. Uh, so it was, a, yeah, it was a busy, it was a busy time between that and trying to grab interviews here and there and, and connect with you and inform you of what we're doing. So uh, yeah, it was a really, uh, it was a really thrilling, exciting uh, few days. And I got to say, if ever there's a great place to compete, it's got to be in Oberstdorf, Germany. It's a quaint little resort town nestled between uh, a range of mountains in the Alps. Uh, and what was amazing as well is that although there was a premier figure skating event with some of the best in the world, most people were just going about their business. Like, every, you know, the uniform in Oberstdorf is Gore-Tex. <laughs> <Everyone's, laughs> a little bit of that. A little bit of that. You know, everyone's going on walks, outdoors, adventuring, uh, parachuting, uh, you know, riding up the gondola and so forth. And then, you know, a couple of people were sort of poking into the, uh, the, the arena there to, to see what was happening. And there was maybe, I want to say, three, four... I think 500 audience members tops. Uh, I don't think I saw one of the Canadian in the hall, apart from the competitors uh, in the building. So I really think skating fans should uh, land into this event because it's a great event in a great spot. There's so much access to the skaters. Uh, they're not segregated into secure areas. They're just sort of out and about. <laughs> so we can like get them a, get a sound bite from them. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be like, oh. <laughs> totally. without, getting, without, getting, without getting tased by the German police, right? So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. I can accost them on behalf of Playboys and get their comment. And yeah, and it's I a great know. event that everyone should put on their figure skating calendar for those who are uh, interested in traveling to a live event. So let's dive into it, Myth. Uh, and I think the story of the weekend was the return of the uh, Olympic Paris champions, Tatiana Velosojar and Maxime Trenkov. And boy, I got to say, Matt, uh, Myth, there were like two different versions of that team this weekend. There was the version on the first day of practice and the practice and warm up heading into the short program. They were strong. They looked confident. Uh, yes, they're still, you know, attempting relatively the same tricks. Uh, their throw triple loop is massive. The throw flip is also massive uh, and very impressive. And also, let's be clear, there's been some discussion that they introduced the flip to compete with you know, some of the, the quad masters that are now happening in pairs. In 2011, 2012, they were attempting that front flip and landing it fairly consistently in the short program to our favorite, that Evanescence program. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Bring me to life, baby. Bring me to life. <laughs> uh, so that's not a new trick. Like I mean, the fingerless I, gloves. I, I love that. I love that. <laughs> I actually did like that program. And her backless, the backless top. Oh, oh my wow. god. Yeah. No, they, like, they, they always choose the most fun programs. And like, they, they're not even like traditional Russian Paris teams in that like, oh, we we must do two classical pieces. Like, they actually have, like, and we, as you saw this year, like, they had their short program. Totally. And, uh, I, I mean, they looked in control. They looked as, as strong as I've ever seen them. Uh, they also introduced the, well, they reintroduced the flip. They've introduced the 
triple Salco, double toe, double toe. So they've added the double toe to try and like get like those creep points, in, yeah. claw any you know <laughs> fraction of a point that they possibly can. Right. Um, and then the day of the short, points. <laughs> that's right. Then the day of the short program happened, and it was disaster in the short, mm. uh, which was surprising to see. I don't know what your impressions were of, of those gaps that he made in the short program. It, it was a bit of a it was a bit of a disaster. I mean, I, I don't think since their world's 2012 short program where they had that unfortunate uh, mistake on the death spiral, uh, have they had really a bad short program? And it's funny because. Uh, Velocity and Trankov have said that the free program is their strength, but really they've actually had some really consistent short programs, um, especially in the Olympic season last e last year, uh, and even their Skate America uh, personal best was like a fabulous short program. But mm -hmm. here, I mean, I think I think some off season some comeback jitters were a little bit apparent. I mean, yeah. going into uh, the throw, they made a very silly mistake where. Uh, he kind of tripped over himself and like she landed. She's like, okay, well you can trip, but I'm going to like land. This <laughs> yeah, <totally. laughs> uh, yeah. She's like, you take a break, dust yourself off. I'm going to land this. Right? Triple but, um, and then of course, like the huge shocker was the triple twist where honestly, I think he just overcooked it because like, like the Nebelhorn trophy people probably had to like remove the roof just so that her head didn't touch it when like he like flung her up in the air. Cause like that's how much height they get on their twist. Yeah. But like, I think they overcooked it. And as a result, the catch was off. And I mean, it was, it was, it was pretty ugly, but like, you know, it happens to like even the best people like Hanyu and Chan, they've messed up elements as easy as spins and like like Chan messed up his double axle which like never happens because look how good his quads are so Velocidar and Trankov messing up their triple t twist like it was a, a shocker I th I but like getting, it happens yeah, right? I, th I thought he was getting down on his knee to propose again I thought Maxine <laughs> you already sealed the deal like what is this oh, no, like, let's already, move he, on he already had the ring right but I don't know I she, know you've got she might have wanted like, the ring's on her finger the nuptials have been exchanged she might have wanted a divorce after that short program, but <laughs> yeah. or at least a, at least a moment so of separation. Was, <laughs> yeah, what was what was fascinating is uh, he took quite a while to uh, appear before the press uh, after that short program. He was probably quite disappointed uh, and embarrassed. Uh, and the truth came out in, in the um, in the press conference afterwards. More of a press huddle. Uh, the press conference had essentially, you know. <laughs> And it ended. Uh, Tatiana sort of split. She went to find uh, Maxime and came back. And he said in a quote, and I'll quote him here, his response to the disaster of the short program and the questions from media, he says, we have four new lifts for the long program uh, because our vision of lifts, it's skating together and it's choreography and it's what we are doing or were doing three years ago. We want to show for the people that pair skating is more about the lifts than the jumps because now it's just about skating hard programs. And that is in a direct response, I'm certain, to the advances that have been made by the Canadians and the Chinese and even the Americans to push the envelope to, to introduce more difficulty in side-by-side -side jumps and more difficulty with uh, throw quads and uh, twists. So um, you could tell that he was a bit you know, resentful of the fact that the program didn't go well and they weren't even attempting as difficult to program necessarily as some of the tricks that other teams are, uh, uh, are attempting. So a bit defensive there. Then we saw a skater, I saw a skater in practice. Stay with side-by-side -side jumps. Uh, he struggled in warm-up on the side-by-side -side jumps. And then by the time the long program competition came and the lights, you know, lights were on, the music was started, he was flawless. Uh, so that's really a sign of a, of a strong champion being able to, to come back uh, and work his way into the competitive stream. And it's a reminder that, I mean, this is their first competition as Olympic champions. There's got to be a new and a different pressure that comes with that. And they've been out of the circuit for a year and a half. So, uh, you know, maybe we should give them some time to, to sort of to find their, their ice lights again, so to speak. Yeah. And, well, the interesting thing is the judges, they... They didn't quite treat them as the Olympic champions that I expected. Like I, I kind of ha had this mindset that if Volosajar and Trankov skate cleanly, 
then the judges are likely to give them a very huge score. But their component scores were actually scaled back. They were um, below 70 uh, uh, for components, which is, I think it was like 68 or something, which was actually uh, quite low for them. Uh, and that's like, you know, with the Sochi s scoring aside, like in general, like even outside of Russia, like Volosh Sarantrankov usually score very well in the free skate, especially sure. if they s yeah. skate as cleanly as that. But yes. I think the judges acknowledge that they were kind of getting used to this program and they're kind of getting uh, their bearings. So we're likely to see that number rise uh, throughout the season as uh, they get more comfortable with the program. What I was surprised with was their component scores in the short program. And I mean, I know they're Velos and Trankov and they're amazing, but like their, their component scores were 32.74 which is a lot. I mean, that was the component score of Sui and Han for their flawless short program at Worlds last year. So that was like, so that, just to put it in perspective, I think they were a little bit overscored in that segment. And the judges really need to take into account, um, like while as great a Paris team as Volashar and Trankov are, if you do two major visible errors in the, te in the technical program or the short program used to be the technical program, I think, like, skaters need to be held accountable for that. I mean, the German team of Vartman and Blomayer, like the new team, they skated amazingly. Uh, they are not nearly the level of quality as the Russians, but they also had a clean skate. And I think mm -hmm. definitely under 6.0, like, the judges would have had no excuse to put um, Velocistar and Trankov first. But... Obviously, in the free, like, Velocistar and Trankov nailed it. Like, they had an amazing program uh, to Dracula, which is, again, music that not many people use. And I love when skaters, like, don't use war horses and actually do new music. And um, Trankov said in an interview, they had their whole Jesus Christ superstar heaven, and now they're kind of, like, yeah. hellish, more dark um, Dracula. Yeah. So I think that's a... a a wonderful, uh, a wonderful move for them and a great contrast. And it kind of removed that doubt that I'm sure a lot of people had after the short program when it came to the Russians. So it'll be nice to see how they approach the season. And they really needed that solid free skate to like give them the confidence and give other people confidence that, mm -hmm. hey, they're back. Yeah, so to signal to the world that that they're ready, they mean business and they're ready to uh, to take them on uh you know debatable as to whether they have the technical might to go toe to toe head to head uh with a, a technically clean uh Sui and Han or Johan Radford but they're they're definitely there they're in the game they're in the running I think their short program you know their long program I feel like is going to take a bit longer to grow on me and some others as well their short program I think it's it's fantastic. It's exhilarating. It's innovative. It gives me chills. Uh, it's not quite Davis and White Bollywood from 2010 <laughs> Short Dance, which was like a tour de force. As but a brown person, it's... I can attest that, you know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, they've actually worked really hard. And especially Tatiana, her like hand movements and her like gestures or mudras, as we call them, like they're actually, she's like, they worked hard on trying to get that uh, authentic. Mm. Like, the, like, and, Max it's, team said that they they hired a Bollywood dancer in Russia yeah. uh, to help them go through the choreography. So they've gone to you know they've tried to find someone authentic to 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 lead them through that. And it's <clears> great. <throat> like I wouldn't I wouldn't have expected it from them. I mean, once they do it, I'm like, oh yeah, they would do something like that because they do love doing original music choices. Um, but I think I think throughout the season we will see that program grow more and get more intricate as they get more. Uh, of a comfort level with it. Certainly they will perform it better than they did here because there's not much worse that they could have performed that program. Yeah. But Mind you, they, I mean, they have always kicked off their competitive seasons with the exception of their first season together, 2010-2011. They've always kicked it off at Nettlehorn and some years they haven't had great skates and it's it's been a, a good way to get the programs out there, make some of those small errors so that when they get to the Grand Prix circuit, they're, they're ready to skate uh, smoothly and sort of work the kinks out. So that may that may unfold again for them here. The thing that surprised me, having I haven't seen them skate uh, live in a uh, few years now, and somehow it, it took this seeing them right at ice level. Myth, he does not point his toe. Oh, Max, yeah. Maxim Maxim Trankov is not. 
a toe pointer. And I think like... That's for ice how, dancers, how, really. How did I... <laughs> yeah, I suppose. But, you know, Eric Radford has a beautiful, great line in a pointed toe. And this is the Olympic champion. And, you know, he's got a stiff, flexed foot coming out of both his side-by-side triple jumps. I was really astonished. It, it Somehow it only became apparent to me seeing him live. So... Um, it, you know, it, is, it is a detail and it is something. And the thing is, I think they're able to sort of get away with that because Paris skating is usually about watching the lady. I mean, I think that's kind of, Duhamel and Radford are sort of the opposite where, like, actually I think Radford is more the elegant one and, Duhamel, and Duhamel is the fierce powerhouse. Whereas with the Russians, uh, Maxim Trankov is showing, is exhibiting all his power and strength. Totally. Um, and if, Aliona you know, is you know, the if she, elegant if, one, right? If, <laughs> if, Megan, if Megan Hatt was the one throwing Eric, they'd have landed that quad years ago. Oh, my God. Yeah, <laughs> they, would have, they would have every – yeah. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so, that, so that's Velocidar and Tranko. They had a great competition. And that, I think that was a really nice win to set themselves up for the rest of the season. And um, hopefully at some point I've, like, posted links to their videos. And also, Ted got a wonderful interview with Velocizar and Trankov, so you should definitely check that one out uh, as well. But we should definitely talk about the other pairs too, right? Because yes, there was some amazing yeah, programs one, from, like... Yeah, one... One rung down on the podium uh, were uh, Alexis Kameka and Chris Kuhn of the United States. Mm -hmm. And I think they had a great showing as well. They looked fantastic in practice. Um, I was also able to capture the video of their new side-by-side sequence, the triple toe loop, into a triple toe loop, uh, which uh, I think was a, I think it's a, it's a debut. Uh, yeah, of that, that's great. Of, of film film footage of that uh, of that that piece. So I'm excited uh, that we were able to bring uh, viewers that they look. Very, she's as feisty in person uh, and on the ice watching this practice as she has been portrayed on television. I think she definitely leads that team uh, in terms of their, uh, their determination and their, their aspirations. I thought their short program to Nothing Else Matters by Metallica, it's a few different versions uh, of that, that piece, including uh, female vocals, which I've not seen before. Uh, I thought it was great. It's edgy, it's raw, that's what she called it, uh, and I think it helps to set themselves apart. She's also wearing a hot, hot cat suit uh and she rocks a she rocks a straight mm -hmm, and she rocks a well she her and vanessa james james, we'll get to her we'll get to her in a moment but uh and she also rocks a uh a platinum blonde bow tail like uh like nobody's business yes and like you like you i totally agree i love their programs this year like i think there's such an a wonderful contrast between this dark edgy metallica program and this very elegant regal uh, elizabeth the golden age program mm. and mm -hmm. unfortunately alexa and chris had a, uh not as good a short program as they could have like they had uh, mistakes on again like like the twist right <laughs> like what is like like velocity and trankov and skamak and theorem have like two of the best triple twists in like the world yeah. um so much so that uh, Skamak and Knirum pulled off a quad twist uh, oh, yeah. in their in their program, which they've had I think since last year, if not the year before as well. But no, they did they, they, they debuted it uh, last year. Last year, last year. right? Um, so, like, I think those are two very strong contrasting programs, and um, moving from fourth place to second place was exactly what they wanted to do. I'm sure they themselves knew that the best they could do uh, against Voloshar and Trankov was second place but it was really important to cement themselves above like other really great teams like uh, Vanessa James and Morgan Cipre which um, we'll talk about in a sec but it also sets themselves up nicely for a really strong Grand Prix season and says hey the US champs are here they had they nailed their um, they nailed their triple sow cows in the free skate they nailed their quad twist uh, they had some beautiful throws uh, so I think this competition was really good for them for debuting their programs mm -hmm. and uh, showing what they're made of and that they actually intend to really be in the hunt for those G uh, Grand Prix medals this season. Absolutely. I think they're making it okay that they are not... They, they... 
who weren't a fluke. They, they made they qualified for the world team in 2013. They didn't qualify for the Olympics or world team mm. uh, in the Olympic year in 2014. Last year they did. They might have the reputation that they can be on or off. They seem to be on, and they're indicating and showing that the quad twist is not, you know, uh, a, a once in a blue moon. It's a consistent uh, piece for them. He or trick. Chris actually commented on the fact that it now feels much more um, uh, routine to It attempt. looks routine, it, too. <laughs> it looks totally routine. And he said that, you know, at around the time of Nationals last year, when they were, uh, when they introduced that trick into their programs, he said after the quad twist, which was a, which would start the program, he was gassed. Like, he had nothing yeah. left in the tank to push through the remaining, like, four minutes, 20 seconds. Uh, and now he's he's much more accustomed to it, and he knows how to move on uh, uh, beyond it after they've landed it. So, uh, so great debut for them. And now to uh, the French. Mm -hmm. I got to oh say, Trey Bien. I mean... Trey Bien. Bien fait, right? That's a hot team. Man. That... They are a good looking team. I, I don't know what it is with France and like their ability to just churn out hot people, but like <laughs> they they they're a great looking team, and not and not just like because they're both like good looking people, but like like they're they actually look like a very solid like athletic team, and they they're again like sometimes Paris teams can be viewed as like oh you have your strong man and you're dainty little girl who or a woman who is kind of the contrasting thing but like I think kind of like to Hamill and Radford or yeah like to Hamill and Radford they are both really strong athletes and they are there to show that they've got some sass but they can also got, get some class as well because like that short program is like I, I love their short program I, I think too. I think they're um, like the styling and it, it's great and I think um, even though it wasn't their best short program at Neville Horn, it, it's got a lot of potential and it's, and, uh, it can be a crowd pleaser that, that sort of music and that sort of like vibe. And I'm really pleased that they were able to, um, kind of shake off the short program and then deliver a very lovely, elegant free skate, which, you yeah. know, they're not really known for like kind of their balletic ele elegance They're no known more for their athleticism. But I think that was a really nice soft side of, uh, James and Supre that we got to see and uh, I mean it got them a bronze and I think that sets themselves up nicely for the Grand Prix series. Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, stronger, harder sort of tango style music is what we're more accustomed to seeing that team skate to and obviously it's something that they're comfortable with. I'm actually, frankly, glad that they've selected music that, uh, that complements that sort of approach to the short program because if they want to make it into the top five and ideally onto the podium, the short program is going to is will tell the tale and will help set them up for that. So whatever will help them get through those seven elements of the short program, I said do it. I don't care if it's like white noise. If you need to play white noise for two and a half minutes, or, you know, to get those elements down and done to put yourself in striking position. Uh, go heading into the long program, by all means do it, but they've skated, they're, they've chosen great music that's sexy and sultry. Her cat suit number is phenomenal, and I don't know if this shows up on television, but there are, she's got like little like slits around her <laughs> hip or pelvis, I don't know what you call that. Oh, girl, that's that's going for the co those component scores, okay? Like that is that is <laughs> yeah. that is that is like I got my skating skills, I got my yeah. choreography, and I got my little slit, right? Like mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, on both sides. I mean, right? it's, it's a it's a smoking hot. I mean, I, I, well, let me put it this way: if yeah, if the Americans are steamy in their number, the French are like sizzling, like they. They've picked cautions that are out of this world. And him, Morgan, as well. He's got this, like, panel right down the front, right down to the navel, like, all see-through. I was just like... All that V-neck, right? Like, um, oh, it's I mean, more it's, than a V-neck, right? It's more than a V-neck. Okay, it's, it's like a U-neck. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a navel neck. Like, it goes... Um, yeah. yeah, like, so, only, only, they, only, the, only they can pull... Nobody wants to see any either of us in that, but, like, only the French can pull <laughs> yeah. that off. And of course, Honestly. like you know, that I think that's that's a throw like a throwback to like like Anacine and Pesera. They're known for being very sensual and very 
sultry and like you'd almost feel embarrassed watching an em- exhibition number with your parents sitting in the living room with you like it's just, it was <laughs> it was that risque and risque is okay. a french word understandably yep. right so and, and, and like you say they've i think they've chosen great music to show softer side i really like the choice that she's made and both of them are made but that she's made in her costuming for the long program it doesn't distract from the skating that they're doing i think it compl- it complements her her skin tone as well, uh, clean, white. Uh, I think it's a good choice. I, I'm okay with her long program outfit. I think it's, Oh, really? We're going to agree to disagree. It's, 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 it's a little bit kind of Princess Belle. Like, it's like, girl, did you like steal that from Polina Edmonds or something? Like, that is a fairy costume if I have ever seen one. Um, and I don't know. It's, I Like, I, I get it's appropriate for the program, but I, I think she could have done something that was a little less billowy and something a little i, I mean think, you know i think she's already yeah, had one tattoo so she's shown the skin t- she's shown that she's got the body now she's going to show that she's got the elegance so you know that's that's probably how that works so it was very smart on their part as well i think last year in shanghai she probably was looking at her teammate gabrielle papadakis in, in the ice dancing competition of course, take gold in a very similar plain costume. She was thinking, "What am I doing wearing all these bedazzles? If I can get away with that." And yes, so she borrowed. It's going for yeah, material, yes. right? <laughs> totally. But I, the, okay, myth. But great as, programs. As, as, as well. exciting as the com- yeah, as, as exciting as the competition was, I was over the moon at a particular event that happened on the final day of competition. So I'm in sort of the foyer of the Oberstor or the, the, the arena. And like I say, the athletes are just kind of milling about. They're going about their business. In some cases, they're putting on their skates. They're meeting fans. They're having chats with their coaches. They're in and out, grabbing a meal, whatever. Uh, and at one point, Titanic Velocijar is at the gift shop, sort of a gift you know, gift shop boutique uh, that sells, you know, those hideous like, skate boot charms and all that crap that, like, you the little bedazzled gloves, this. right? Like the bedazzled gloves, which she was totally buying. Oh my god! Really? So <laughs> she she's to my left. And I'm kind of having this like, Work. wow, I'm like the Olympic champion is like seven meters away from me, like just living life like she's a regular person. And I look over to the right around the turnstile, and who walks in? Aliona Savchenko of Germany, the former the five champion who had a long-standing rivalry with the Russians. So I'm like, whoa, what's going to happen here? It was like Crystal versus Alexis, like both of them, same place, same time. And I'm there in the middle of that to witness it. <laughs> you're like, it's you like were they were in between a standoff, right? Like, Oh, everything, everything was churning inside me. I was like practically tingling and elevating at the, at what I was witnessing. They were, they like avoided eye contact. There was, you know, she was going about her thing. Tatiana was doing her thing. Uh, the two of them were going to meet each other. These two like skating divas in the same place same time so oh my god uh, yeah so that sort of capped off an amazing week of, uh, of excellent pair skating in uh, in Netherlands. well and and well you mentioned aliona Savchenko because like uh we actually have an interview that uh is going to be posted in a couple days uh eventually i'll post the link here somewhere uh but you got to interview Aliona and Bruno, and you got to sort of talk about uh, their whole uh, kerfuffle with their the French Federation and <laughs> look kerfuffle, <laughs> the, little cur- the little you know not being released sort of thing. <laughs> DJ, totally. DJ, come on, come on. Well, well uh, yeah, you- <laughs> I'll keep saying it until until it happens. But uh, you know me, like the stalker skating fan, I couldn't just sit there and let this. You know, let Aliona walk in and just go about her business. I had to practically accost her and, and shake her down for an interview, uh, which she and Bruno uh, agreed to do. So I was able to uh, spend a bit of time with them and get an update from them in terms of how their training is going, even though they haven't been in a competition uh, in, I guess we're at, you know, over a year now that they've been training together uh, and, and what's next and when we can possibly see them in competition. So yeah, look for, look in this, stay tuned and keep watching this space to, to see that interview. And one more quick shout out for the Paris competition, uh, the Canadian team of Seguin and Bilodeau. Uh They didn't have their best skates, but like, I think this was still a great debut competition for them. Like they were able to uh, kind of bounce back from the fall in the short program and deliver a, a pretty okay free skate. Unfortunately, like their lifts didn't quite work out, 
But when you're getting accustomed to a new program, lifts can actually be like the bane of your existence because you're trying to space them out. You're trying to see if you have a, enough energy for them. Uh, we even saw with like James and Cipre, like we, we got a, a, a practice clip of them like, ba like bailing kind of scarily on like a lift, but then like absolutely nailing it after. So I think mm -hmm. as all these teams get accustomed to their programs, including Seguin and Bilodeau, uh, they'll definitely um, kind of um, work out the kinks and come nationals, Seguin and Bilodeau, they look in fine form to be on the podium again. Uh, but there's going to be some stiff competition, which we'll kind of talk about later on. This, this is it. This, yeah. And this is it. And I think that um, uh, although it's, you know, you don't have to necessarily come out gangbusters at your first competition, particularly in a Challenger Series events, event like Nebelhorn, I think that if you're a Canadian pair who wants to stay on the level of Canadian pairs, and given that more towers and Marinero are chomping at the bit to step on of that podium so that they can go to Worlds next year. I, I, I think Canadian pairs are kind of like Russian ladies. Like you, you need to make a statement hard, fast, and as soon as possible. And they frankly didn't. I thought, thought that their short program was animated and lively. It was fast-paced music. They kept up, kept up with it, uh, which was excellent. Uh, I think oh, she fun. is I love Cirque du Soleil, yeah. I agree. Uh, I think that uh, they're they're moving beyond and they're maturing beyond their sort of juniorish appearing skating. I think they're starting to look like a more mature adult pairs couple, but I think that they needed to skate relatively clean, mm. you know, clear to signal to the rest of the world and particularly like to their their teammates in Canada that they're ready to to remain on the world team. That wasn't a fluke, and, and uh, I'm going to take the charge uh, on to 2018 in Pyeongchang. But but we all know it's a long season, and this was just the start of it. And there was a lot of great starts for a lot of the, uh, the, the teams. There were some different characters, different versions of teams. We saw a different version of uh, uh, Tatiana and Maxime in the short program than we did in the long program. They're finding their competitive legs again. The Americans are becoming more confident and, and, and more uh, uh, better placed in their role uh, in the world as a, as a top team, uh, and the French as well. So all in all, a pretty strong pairs competition. Great. Uh, and if you'd like to check out the other disciplines, you can look at these annotations that I will eventually put into this video uh, for the other uh, disciplines in the Nebelhorn competition. And of course, our channel has, thanks to Ted's like super hustling work, <laughs> he, we have tons of <laughs> clips of uh, programs and practice clips, uh, which you can also check out on our channel.